This story happened to me a few months back. I'm a 19 year old girl and I'm currently a college student. I always needed a job to keep my head above water to afford college. I came from a lower middle class home and knew that it was going to be difficult getting through college. I lucked out and had a decent tuition with grants and scholarships but I still had to pay for cost of living and everything else. I went to a pretty good college. The only problem was that it was really far away from my parents. Like we live on the east coast and I was going to school on the west coast kind of far. I had a job lined up before I moved. I searched for jobs in the area a lot. I ended up finding a local mom and pop shop that sympathized with my situation and guaranteed that I would have a job when I moved. It worked out for a good little while. They paid $18 an hour and it was a really fun work environment. It was a family owned business and everyone in the family was always really nice. They really made me feel like part of the team. At the beginning of my second semester a big chain moved into the area. They basically stole all of the customers in the area and it wasn't long before I got laid off. I remember being really sad. Not just about losing my job, but because this family owned business that's been in operation for 10 years that's now close to shutting down because someone opened a subway across the street. I struggled to find another job for a couple of weeks. I ended up applying to become an Uber Eats driver. The pay wasn't amazing, but I had the ability to work whenever I wanted. And that was nice. I had this one house on the outskirts of the city order food from McDonald's. It went just like any other order up until I got to the house. It looked really run down and beaten up. I remember feeling a little uneasy as I pulled into the driveway. This wasn't the first time I had this feeling, so I just tried to brush it off. But normally people get out of their house to come and get their food, like they're waiting for it. It's not a surprise when I get there for those people. But it was for this guy, because I had to actually go up and knock, which I really disliked. I remember walking up this driveway that was made of the worst concrete I'd ever seen. It looks like it was covered in dirt or something. I made my way up to the front door and rang the bell. I didn't hear any sound from the inside and assumed that it just didn't work. I then proceeded to knock. I waited a couple of seconds and then he came to the door. The guy was literally wearing a Snuggie. I just kind of hoped that he had something on underneath it. I asked him how his night was going and he said fine. I handed him his food and turned around to leave. Wait, he said. I turned around to see this guy in a Snuggie walk up to me and hand me a $50 tip. Wow, that's a lot. Thanks so much, I eagerly exclaimed. He gave me a cheeky smile and told me to drive safe. I really wanted to believe that he was just being nice, a sort of wholesome guy. My creep radar was definitely going off a little bit, but I told myself I was just being judgmental. Fast forward to the next night. I'm working again. I see another person wanting the same meal from McDonald's. Despite being a little off, the guy left a really nice tip. I thought this would be a good chance to make a little extra cash. I decided to take the order and started on my way. This time was a lot different though. When I went up to deliver the meal, he was ready for me, like he was excited to see me. He was dressed in a tuxedo and everything. I walked up to him and gave him his meal. He took it and said, thanks. Then he handed me a rose. A freaking rose. I was like, what the heck, in my head. I was feeling really uncomfortable at this point, and my creep radar was off the charts now. That's when he told me he wanted to show me something. He told me to just stand in his driveway. He pulled out a remote out of his pocket and pressed a button on it, and the garage door started to open. When I got about halfway up, I noticed that there was an entire date room in this guy's garage, like a fancy table, two chairs, flowers, and an ice sculpture. A freaking ice sculpture. It was honestly shocking. I knew exactly what his intentions were at this point. He asked me to have a seat and eat dinner with him. What are we going to eat? <laughs> I asked. He looked me up and down and said, I normally eat that entire meal by myself, but I can share it with you. Wow, a complete creep is trying to put the moves on me and all he offers me is some of his McDonald's, I thought to myself. I politely told him I have a boyfriend and that I was flattered. 
I turned my body to start going back to my car when he grabbed my arm. Really hard. That was when all my worst fears were confirmed. He started pulling me into his garage. I tried fighting as much as I could, but he was a lot stronger than I was. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but no one seemed to be around. That was when I did something that may have saved my life. I clenched my fist as tight as I could and punched him square in his nads with all my strength. It must have hurt really bad. He screamed and let me go. He fell to the floor and continued yelling for a few seconds, and this gave me my chance to try and escape. I ran back to my car and tried to leave. I was really panicked, so it took me a second to find my keys and start the car. That was when he started running in my direction. He jumped onto the hood of my car. He pounded on the hood and screamed at me. I couldn't understand most of what he was saying. I'd make out a few words here and there, mostly dirty words about my body and what he was going to do to me, and I floored it. My first priority was getting away from this guy as fast as possible, and he stayed on the hood for a lot longer than I would have thought. I had made two whole turns before he finally fell off. I kept driving for a really long time just to get as far away as I could. After driving for a safe distance, I stopped at a red light. I cried, and my body was shaking with fear. When the light turned green, I pulled off to the side of the road and just cried. I cried for a long time. I called the police and told them what happened, and they said they'd come and pick me up. They got there after five or so minutes and brought me to the station. They asked me a lot of questions. I told them everything I could. I later found out that he was released from jail three months ago for being inappropriate with a 13-year-old girl, and that guy was actually a level three offender. Looking back, I can't believe how close I had come to being a victim of some kind of horrible crime. He nearly had me in his garage. If I hadn't punched him, I almost certainly would have ended up with a lifetime worth of PTSD. Unfortunately, he fled his home and had been out and about somewhere while the police searched for him. A few months after the incident, the police informed me that he had ended his own life. They told me he started squatting in random apartments around the city for the time, and he tried kidnapping a girl a few weeks into doing this. Well, she called the cops and I guess he couldn't escape, so he just offed himself. I'm honestly glad he's dead. He's the kind of person that spreads misery for no good reason. I have no sympathy for that monster, and I hope he continues to rot. A couple of years ago, my girlfriends and I decided to do something wild. We all had summer jobs, and it was one of the few times over the summer that we were all going to have an entire weekend hangout. Our schedules were a little hectic, so we knew that we had to take the opportunity and do something fun. After seriously struggling to figure out something exciting to do, we settled on camping. I remember being so excited as I walked through Walmart with my best friends to get a tent for all of us to share. We bought a bunch of junk food and managed to steal a bottle of vodka for my dad to bring with us. We went to a pretty typical campground where people could bring their Winnebago or set up a tent space if they wanted. We figured that it would be safer to do that than to go out into the woods and randomly find a spot. None of us had ever gone camping before, so it just seemed like the logical thing to do. But we got there Friday night after everyone was off of work. By the way, there were four of us. We got our tent set up around four in the afternoon. After that, we just started goofing around and whatnot. The campground itself was pretty deserted. For some reason, there just didn't seem to be too many people around, and it was a big place too. You could probably spend half an hour walking around the entire area. We saw at least two families that were in campers. They were kind of a ways off though. You know how it is. People kind of space themselves out naturally. We go to the campground to get away from people, not see them, right? Everything had been going pretty well. We started making s'mores by the fire that we had set up and just enjoyed ourselves. It was getting dark and it was really comfortable. Until a really strange looking man started warming himself up with our fire. 
We had all been sitting together on one side of the fire, and he just awkwardly made himself comfortable on the other side. I didn't want to be rude, but I feel really uncomfortable by the way this guy just came over to us. He didn't say a word either, just sat there rubbing his hands. I asked him if he needed anything, and he just said no. And then he stood there in silence. My friends and I, who have been laughing and being loud just a minute ago, were all quiet now, waiting to see what this guy was going to do. He didn't look like he was dressed for camping in the first place. He was wearing khakis and a dress shirt. It was tucked in and everything. It was like he just left the office and decided to come here and sit in front of our fire without saying a word. After a few minutes of silence, one of my friends told him that he had to go. She told him that this was our fire and he was making this uncomfortable. He tried playing it off like he was dumb or confused. I didn't buy it, and neither did my friends. He walked away without a fight, though. We just left it at that. The rest of the night went on without incident, which I was happy about, and we had totally forgotten about the vodka that we had brought that night, and it was probably a good thing, too. None of us slept very well. Again, it was the first time any of us had actually gone camping, and the noise of wildlife and whatnot was very distracting. When we woke up the next morning, we noticed that the campground had become even more desolate than it had been the day before. There was only one family that had been in sight of our campsite, and they must have left now because we didn't see their Winnebago anymore. We didn't really take too much of an issue with it, though. At a loss for what to do during the daylight, we decided on walking the hiking trail. It was only four or five miles long and was beginner-friendly, None of us were expert hikers or anything, so it just seemed like a good fit. We started walking on the hiking trail, and we saw that strange guy again. I remember one of my friends pointing it out and said that he looked like he was doing something strange. When we got a little bit closer, we noticed that he was sitting on a rock trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. Pretty strange guy, suffice to say. We walked by him, and as we were passing him, he looked up at us and immediately started to speak. Now, he didn't look at us at all until we were right in front of him. I thought that was weird in and of itself, but then he asked if he could join us to finish the rest of the trip. My friends and I were all at a complete loss of words as what to say. It may have antagonized him if we told him no, so I stepped in and told him that he could walk the rest of the way with us. I felt one of my friends elbow me when I did, which... I'm not sure if he noticed or not, so there we were, walking along the hiking path with a complete stranger holding a Rubik's Cube and dressed in business casual. Same clothes, by the way. The first thing that I wanted to do was to get him talking. Who was this guy? What was he doing here? I tried getting him talking for a few minutes, but he never gave any kind of significant reply. I would ask him what he was doing here, and he would say, Walking. I would ask him what he does for a living and he would say something generic like, sales. He only ever gave one word replies and didn't say anything to us the entire way, only spoke when spoken to. This completely ruined the social dynamic. Me and my friends were all extremely uncomfortable and we really didn't say much ourselves the rest of the way. We made it back to the campsite and when we did, he just kind of wandered off. He didn't even say a word. No goodbye or anything. He just left. That was weird enough. We decided to move our campsite down to another part of the campground, a little bit closer to other people. Normal people, just in case. Once we got the fire going, one of our friends remembered that we had brought vodka with us. She got the bottle out of my bag and said that she needed it after a day like that. I asked her if she thought it was a good idea to be drinking at some random campsite with this weirdo wandering around, and she looked at me and said, all the more reason. I shrugged my shoulders and said that I couldn't argue with that logic. I know what you're expecting, that we all got drunk and had some kind of horrible incident with that weird guy, and this might shock you, but we didn't. Not that night at least. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, we didn't really do anything too crazy. We drank a little bit too much vodka, got sleepy, and went to sleep in our tent. But this is where things got weird. I woke up and saw him 
staring at me. He was inside our tent while we had been sleeping. I was the first one to wake up and as you might imagine, I screamed at the top of my lungs. My friends all woke up in a panic and the tent came crashing down on us. There were a couple of minutes of disorganized chaos and random yelling, but after we put the dumpster fire out, I got fed up. What do you want with us? I yelled at him. You're in our tent watching us sleep. Are you a pervert or something? He just stood there for a minute. He said, no, and walked away. That was when I knew it was time to leave the campsite. We packed up and left just like that. Driving with a hangover was the worst thing ever, but I was willing to do it to get away from that freak. I don't know if he had any bad intentions with us. He may have just been really weird or mentally handicapped. All I know is that it generally freaked me out and it made me really regret ever going camping. Me and my friends all agreed to never do that again. I gave the tent to my dad and he turned it into a house for his pet pig. I had the worst landlord ever last year. I was your very typical small town college graduate. I got a degree in marketing and came to the realization that if I didn't move to a large city, that I was going to end up working at Walmart. I didn't really have anything tying me to my area, so it was pretty easy for me to up and move. I decided on Boston because I liked the cold. Being from a small town, I didn't really have a lot of experience with the rights of tenants or getting an apartment or anything like that. I tried following tutorials that people had written online to the best of my ability, but this was a very new experience to me and very stressful. I had the hardest time finding an apartment. You don't realize how competitive it is to get an apartment in a major city like that until you actually do it. Most places literally want my resume, and as unimpressive as it was, I had a really hard time. I eventually found a decent apartment for rent through Facebook Marketplace. It was far from ideal, but I could afford it and it was livable. Honestly, those were my only two criteria. I made the mistake of not doing any research on the owner, the building, or any previous tenants. That turned out to be a serious mistake later on down the road. I remember meeting the owner in person. He gave me serious creeper vibes, like the creepiest looking person I'd ever seen. I try not to be judgmental, so I didn't hold it against him. It was just the way that he looked at me that made me extremely uneasy. He had a lazy eye, old wrinkled skin, his teeth looked like something out of a horror movie. Not sharp or carnivorous or anything, but like the worst dental hygiene you've ever seen in your life. He showed me around the apartment and gave me the keys. I figured that I wouldn't have to be interacting with him too much. I had an automatic rent payment thing that came out of my bank account, so it was whatever. Unless there was some kind of issue that I had, I wouldn't have to speak with him. About a week went by of what must have been the strangest move in my entire life. Now, I've lived a couple of places throughout my years, but living here seriously set me on edge. Things in my apartment would be missing. A lot. I'd hear noises I couldn't explain. Loud ones. I tried to chalk it up to the stress of moving and getting used to living in a city, but it didn't explain everything. I had another really negative experience in that apartment. Not sure how long I've been living there, but there was just one night when I had this horrible sleep paralysis. I remember it was the night after my first day at a new job in the city. I was really tired because my sleep schedule, I had been a little out of whack. I came straight home and just went to bed. I must have woken up at about 2 in the morning, but I couldn't move. All I could see out of the corner of my eye was a tall, thin, pale monster, for lack of a better term. It just stood over my dresser. It seemed to be rummaging through my stuff. That was the first time I'd ever had sleep paralysis. It was horrifying. You can't understand the fear until you live it yourself. Be thankful if you've never experienced it. And that night was something of a tipping point. I was completely over this apartment, city, and new life. Between the small, unexplained things that went on with my stuff and the sleep paralysis incident, 
I knew that something had to change. Another couple of days went by and I started researching on ways I could maybe find another apartment or do something. All I knew was that something had to change. I remember going to bed really late this one night. I had been staying up to find new apartments. I went to bed and fell asleep just fine, but something very unexpected happened. I woke up. I found myself lying in my bed, watching a figure rummage through my stuff. I only saw it out of the corner of my eyes, so I couldn't really be sure. I instinctively turned my entire head to look. It was standing exactly where that monster had been. Now, it was really dark and I couldn't see anything too clearly, but the realization hit me like a ton of bricks. I could move my body, and this was not sleep paralysis. Someone was in my house and rummaging through my stuff right in front of me. That made it so much more terrifying. Where they stood, their back was turned to me and didn't notice that I was awake. I laid there for what felt like forever. I didn't know what to do. Could I just pretend to be asleep the entire time and hope that this person doesn't hurt me? Or should I get up and try to attack them? But then I ran the risk of being knifed or shot. I felt my heart beating in my chest. I had no weapons anywhere around me. The second that I got up, he was going to know it. Another minute or so went by. The stress was eating me alive. I didn't even make a conscious decision, but I heard myself yell, Who are you? I did my best to sound as intimidating as possible. Whoever it was tried to make a run for it, and I decided to chase them. I got out of my bed, saw them in the living room, I leaped on top of this person, pinned them to the floor, and just started beating the life out of them. After two or three good punches, I heard a voice I recognized. Please, stop! You're gonna kill me! It was my... landlord. I screamed at him, asking what he was doing in my apartment, going through my stuff. He looked totally surprised. I guess he expected me not to wake up. He tried feeding me some phony story about thinking that I was away and that he was checking for mice. I may not have known a lot about my rights as a tenant, but I understood that he was not allowed to enter my apartment without telling me, especially while I was sleeping. I threatened to press charges if he didn't let me move out. He gave me my safety deposit back and I moved out two days later. We had originally signed a contract for a year, but given the circumstances, he could have faced serious charges for what he'd done. I was happy to be out. One of the first things I did after moving was tell people about the incident online. I wanted anyone who was thinking about moving into this apartment to know about what had happened, that my stuff had been misplaced or missing throughout my time living there, and I had to move after seeing my landlord in my apartment going through my stuff right in front of me as I was asleep. I have kept my job and decided to stay in Boston. I've been really happy now that I have a good landlord, and looking back, I should have just listened to my first instinct on that guy. If somebody gives you a weird feeling, there's normally a good reason for it. I live in Argentina, nowhere exciting or anywhere that you've heard of. It's a small town a couple of miles outside of Cordoba. You may have heard of Cordoba. It's one of the biggest cities in the country. My hometown is just far enough that we get many benefits of living close to a big city, but not a lot of its problems. The only downside is that small town Argentina is very conservative, and I'm gay. It's not as homophobic as other Latin American nations, but once you get outside of the cities, it becomes almost dangerous. I had a grinder account. Most guys in my town don't actually use pictures of their faces. They don't want to get exposed to the homophobes in the town, so only after talking to a guy for a while will you exchange selfies. I met this one guy early on and we really hit it off. He was really nice, maybe the nicest seeming guy I'd ever met. We started talking in the afternoon and we had exchanged selfies by nighttime. We talked all night long. I'm not going to lie to you, I was head over heels for this guy. 
we made plans to meet later in the week. We were going to meet up at a coffee shop on a Thursday afternoon. It seemed normal enough. We both had the understanding that we were going to have to keep the relationship private and not have any public displays of affection. The coffee shop that we were going to meet at was the nicest one in our town. It had a second floor with a really nice balcony that had a wonderful view. I got there maybe 20 minutes before we said we were going to meet. I kind of wanted to build up the nerve and get used to the environment. I was honestly really nervous. This was going to be the first guy I'd ever had a relationship with. I ordered myself a small cup of water to drink as I waited on the balcony. I remember daydreaming a little bit as I sat there. I had a view of the entrance area so I could see whoever was going to come in. However, I received a text message. It was the guy I had been talking to, and he told me that he was here. I looked down to see four guys walking together, and I immediately started to feel panicked. I replied to the text message telling him that I was in the bathroom. That was when I looked down and noticed that one of their phones had a notification. I had a sneaking suspicion that these guys had come here to attack me. There was an entrance off of the balcony onto one of the side streets. I was just about to go down it when I gave one last glance over at the four guys. I noticed that two of them had baseball bats. That was when I knew I had escaped a seriously violent incident. I left and quietly made my way home. It made me really anxious though because these guys now had my full name and knew what I looked like. They probably even kept the picture of me and posted it online somewhere. I remember straight up freaking out all night. Not only was I extremely disappointed by not getting to date someone, but now I had to literally fear for my life. On some level, I knew that these guys might be guys that were just trying to pull a prank to be mean, but I wasn't sure if it was that or a violent group of people who literally wanted to end my life. For the rest of the week, they kept trying to contact me. I blocked him on Grinder, but then he texted me. I blocked his number, but then another one of them texted me claiming to be the guy's cousin. He kept asking why I stood him up at the coffee shop and that he really wanted to get to know me. I knew it was all just a ploy. I remember one night after the incident. I was walking home after bringing my grandmother some things my mom had borrowed. It had been really late at night. I'm kind of a procrastinator. It had been a couple of weeks and I knew that if I didn't do it right then and there that night, it wasn't going to get done. But as I was walking home, I noticed a guy following me. He tried to play it off like he just happened to be walking in the same direction but I got an extremely uncomfortable feeling from him. I tried looking at him a couple of times to see if I recognized him from the other day, but I didn't even get a good look at the four guys at the coffee shop anyway. It was of no use. I just started to walk faster and faster, but the more I sped up, the more he sped up. At one point, we were basically jogging. I decided that I had enough of this and I was just going to stand my ground. I came to a dead stop and braced myself to fight. I stood there for a few seconds waiting for him to run at me and tackle me or something, but he just went right by. He didn't even look at me or anything. I was extremely confused and then it dawned on me that maybe I was just being paranoid about everything. Maybe this guy wasn't following me after all. There were even a couple of times that I got anxious that I was being watched as I was out in public. Again, they know what I look like and I don't know who they've shown my picture to. I feel like I'm being watched, even to this day. It makes me extremely nervous and sad. One day I'm going to save up enough money and move somewhere I can live my life without fear of all this nonsense. The hard part isn't being attacked or ostracized from my local community. The hard part is the fear of waiting for some kind of attack. I'm in a constant state of terror about my own life, about who I am inside. It's a special kind of fear that so few people know, and it's also why so many of us just fake being straight. But yeah, that was the story about almost being brutally attacked by these homophobic stalkers who might still be hunting me down. I moved out of my parents' house two weeks ago after graduating high school. I was really excited about the whole thing and couldn't wait to get out on my own. 
I had a decent part-time job at a grocery store, but I actually earned most of my money by narrating audiobooks online. I started doing that years ago, and it basically turned into a full-time income. I still worked at the grocery store because I liked having a stable income. Better safe than sorry, I always said. One of the first things I did when I got my own apartment was get a dog. From the time I was a kid, I always considered myself a dog person. I loved them. And despite begging my parents for years, we never got one. My mom claimed that she was allergic, but she never had any kind of a reaction whenever we saw one. It honestly built up a little bit of resentment over the years, but that's neither here nor there. The point was is that I lived on my own and finally could have the best friend I ever wanted. Thankfully, I was a little bit more mature by the time I was picking one out. I know kids or even younger people in general tend to gravitate towards a certain kind of dog or pet, but I wanted to get a dog that would otherwise not have had a good opportunity to be adopted. I went down to the local animal shelter and picked out a goofy mutt that only had one ear. He was a year old and if I hadn't adopted him, they were going to put him down within a week. I knew I had made the right choice. I remember that first day bringing him to the apartment. He was really nice and playful, even though I could tell he was a bit fearful. Things went just fine and he got comfortable within a few days. The scary part of the story comes the day I first started taking him out for walks. I thought I'd been playing with him enough in the house to not have to bring him out, but I read online that you should still take them for walks regardless of how much they play inside, so that's exactly what I did. I remember taking him out and it was a little weird getting used to walking him around the city. I had a nice apartment in the downtown district so walking him was pretty cool. Now, it was pretty early in the morning. It was either before work or after work and I always like to do things as soon as I can so it was a no-brainer for me. As you might imagine, even a buzzing urban center is kind of desolate at 5 in the morning. There just weren't that many people out. I walk my dog, who I had named Cooper by this point. I brought him to a park that was about 10 minutes away by foot. I figured that would give him an opportunity to run around and do what dogs do. No one was around, so I sat down at the bench, unleashed him, and pulled out my phone to reply to a text message. All seemed to be going just fine until a strange man approached me. I don't know what direction he came from, but when I looked up to see him... He was walking straight toward me, and this bench was off the normal path, kind of out of the way. He walked in my direction as he had an intention of sitting down beside me or something, like he was my friend. He was about 20 feet away when I noticed him and looked up from my phone. He had a striped hat on his head. It was blue and orange and looked really strange. He had a sweatshirt and jeans. He could have been a runner, I figured. He stepped directly in front of me and made eye contact for at least five seconds before he actually said anything, and I was already on edge. One word came out of his mouth. Hello. I sat there for a second, not exactly sure what to do or how to respond. I was mentally building up the courage to say something back when he just turned around and started walking away. The entire time, Cooper was staying as far away as possible, looking at this guy, he seemed just as scared as I was. I had no idea what to make of the situation. He didn't strike me as some addict or homeless guy or anything like that. The first thing that popped in my head was that he was some kind of lunatic. I couldn't know for sure. I got Cooper back on his leash and went back home. He didn't follow me or anything, at least as far as I could tell. A couple of days later, I had a day off from work at the grocery store. I had a big audiobook project that I had been working on for a couple of weeks and it was getting close to the due date, so I had one of my grinding days where I was going to do nothing but sit down and record and edit this audio. This is going to sound a little weird, but the way I do my recording is I turn my microphone on, narrate when I can, and every hour or so I will just get up and walk around and move my body. I normally leave my microphone recording even when I'm not there. It's really simple to just edit out the empty noise afterwards. I remember getting the rest of this book narrated later that day. It was a particularly dry book, someone that wanted to be the next Tom Clancy but was doing a really bad job. That night, I sat down to edit some of the audio. 
I noticed something weird in the audio tracks, though. During one of those times that I had gone outside, there was a noise in the audio. It was right in the middle of all the silence, and I know that I didn't randomly come back to my microphone, say one word, and walk away. I got really interested and started to listen to what that noise had been. To my complete and utter horror, it was someone saying, Hello. Exactly the way the man did in the park the other day. I started freaking out. If he said hello into my microphone while I was away, that means that he's in my apartment. I ran down the street with Cooper and called the police. I told them someone was in my apartment. They showed up and didn't find anyone inside. I didn't know what to think. I couldn't imagine how this guy would have found me, got into my apartment during the ten minutes that I was walking around the block, said hello into my mic, and left. It just didn't make any sense. I've been extremely alert about my surroundings ever since this happened. I don't know what this guy's intentions were or are, but if it was to make me an insanely paranoid individual, then he succeeded. I haven't seen that same man around the city or had any other weird audio occurrences, but it was still extremely unsettling nonetheless. I was really naive when I was younger. I put myself into a lot of dangerous situations and never even considered the consequences. One of those instances was when I started hanging out with some older kids. I was in high school, I'm a blonde female, and I lived a party. I felt really cool by hanging out with college kids. All my high school friends thought that I was in fact the coolest person ever. Watching their eyes light up when I told them about college parties was honestly the best thing ever, even if it was a little conceited, but those college parties had some serious risks. Looking back, uh, there were some seriously sketchy figures that went to these parties. I'm not going to bore you with all of the details, but I know that there were some hardcore illicit substances available every single time. Thankfully, I had the sense to avoid any stuff like that. There was one of these parties that changed my life, forever. I remember it being a Friday, and I got the usual text message invite to one of those wild parties. The parties always went down at one guy's house. His name was Jake, and he was old enough to live on his own. I don't know what kind of family background he had, but he was a senior in college and owned his house. He was a bit of a rich snob, and for some reason, he couldn't get enough of these parties. Another weird thing about him was that he had a strange liking of me, almost like he pretended he was my dad, but a little perverse. There were a couple of times that he would hold me in front of the whole group, like, like literally lift me up and hold my entire body like I was a child. It made me really uncomfortable, but I didn't want to make a scene, especially because he was kind of like the leader of the group. As you might imagine, most of the people that ended up at these parties were friends of his, no one that wasn't his direct friend was allowed in. He was very much opposed to letting in strangers or friends of friends because he was anxious about all the illegal stuff we were doing at these parties. And looking back, there was probably quite a bit of stuff that I didn't actually know about. I was the kid in the whole group after all. Anyway, back to this Friday night, I remember there being more people than usual. It was normally not more than 20 or so people and this night was chaotic. I'm not sure the exact number, but there had to have been at least 50 people at one point. There were groups of people that came and went, which was also a little unusual. I remember this night particularly well up until a certain point. I ended up taking some LSD to try it out. I had only ever smoked some green before, and everyone was feeling a little adventurous tonight, including myself. I had a really bad trip, and I realized that this stuff was not for me. I don't really remember too much from that night after that if I'm going to be completely honest with you, but the scary part isn't so much what happened that night, it happens when I wake up. I live in a nice smaller city right outside of Nashville, and do you want to guess where I woke up? Detroit, Michigan. I just remembered opening my eyes to see the most rundown house I've ever seen in my life. No idea where I was at first. 
There were other people around the house too, but most of them were unconscious. By the looks of it, they were pretty rough. Mostly girls, but a few men. I had been laying down on a couch that looked really ripped up and torn. I looked around for any familiar face, but saw none. I was here alone. I tried looking around to see if I had any belongings in the vicinity, but I didn't. I was just awkwardly here by myself and no explanation to how I got here. I ran down the street and started crying. I didn't really know what else I could even do. Keep in mind, I was a high school kid at this point, literally 16 years old. I've never heard of anything like this happening to anyone before, and the last thing I ever expected to happen was to be in some random house, surrounded by hopeless attics in a city I've never even been to before. The only saving grace for me was the fact that it was sunlight outside. If it had been nighttime, I really don't know what I would have done. I definitely wouldn't have been able to handle the situation. I built up the nerve to leave. When I did, I could have sworn I saw Jack's car outside the house. I felt absolutely horrible, so I'm not 100% sure, but I guess it would have made sense for him to be there. I think he may have been the one to drive me here, but I don't know why. I also don't know why he left me alone like this. Maybe he didn't expect me to wake up. I started walking. I remember walking for a long time. It must have been two hours at the very least. I don't know what I was expecting to happen, but I just knew that the further away from that house I got, the better off I was going to be. Where exactly I was going to go and what exactly I was going to do, I really didn't know for sure. There was one point while I was walking down the street that some guy pulled off to the side of the road and asked me how much I charge. I told him I was going to call the cops, and thankfully that got rid of him. As scared as I was, I was still able to think on my feet. Luckily enough, I went the rest of the way without any other incidents. I eventually found a police station and I told them everything. And that's when I found out that I was in Detroit and not Nashville. They asked me a lot of questions and they called my mom and told me that I was here. She drove all the way from Nashville to Detroit just to get me and bring me home. She didn't even ask any questions because she could tell how traumatic it had been. I don't exactly know what happened to that guy, Jake. I didn't see him around after that whole incident. I think that he was involved somehow. Like, he sold me to someone or something. Or maybe he was the one that brought me all the way out there in the first place. That was pretty much the end of my party, life, and friendships with any of those college kids. I was livid. Here I was, the youngest of the group. Literally drugged and kidnapped and brought halfway across the country at a party that I went to. None of them even cared enough to check up on me throughout the party or make sure I got home safely. And here's the worst part. None of them even called the police after I was gone. For all I know, the rest of them were in on the whole thing. If I had been sold into some kind of trafficking circle, that would have been the end of me. No one would have even known where to look. I don't really know what happened or why it happened the way it did. I'm not very curious about any of it either. All I know is that I'm just happy to be alive. I was probably in some serious danger and didn't even realize it at that party that night. There was this one time that I was definitely the scary person in someone else's life. Although I really didn't mean to be, and it all happened like this. It was the release of a new movie a couple of months ago. I was super excited to go because the reviews were fantastic and I was a big fan of the series. I made the mistake of going with my girlfriend at the time, Tiffany. We had since broken up. The relationship just wasn't meant to last. She was a pretty horrible girlfriend in all honesty. I know I have my share of problems, but I only have one real flaw. I have a really bad temper and I can really lose my cool if I am antagonized enough. I know this enough about myself and I actively work towards improving and being a better person. Made a lot of progress the last few years too. But without giving you an entire history of how I've dealt with it, my real strategy is to just walk away from whatever the situation is. If I identify something that makes me mad, I just leave and come back to it if I have to. 
I know it sounds really simple, but actually doing it is tougher than you think. Tiffany was someone who got a kick out of making people mad, and she didn't care if she made me fly off the handle. Obviously, I never hit her or anything, but she has irritated me to the point where I scream at her at the top of my lungs. That only happened one time, and shockingly enough, it didn't stop her from continuing to troll me. Yeah, we definitely are not soulmates. We went to see this movie together. She didn't really care too much about the series and was only going because I was. I offered to drive, pay for tickets and snacks, and was extremely nice to her the entire night. Despite my kindness, she didn't return the favor. About 30 minutes into the movie, she did something that still makes me angry to think about. She verbally started complaining about how stupid the movie was. I told her in advance not to do this. I hushed her two or three times. So in response, she pulled out her phone and googled how the movie ended, and then told me. The people in our immediate vicinity had heard her say it and all gave her a look. It has to be one of the worst things I've ever seen someone do. I mean, why? In the moment, I honestly snapped. I really went out of my way to do everything I could to make this night enjoyable for us. I even bought her flowers on the way to pick her up from her house. She didn't thank me for those either, and now she did this. I remember just feeling the rage inside my chest. It was so powerful. Absolute frustration. I just wanted to enjoy a good night with my girlfriend at a movie I was really excited about seeing. But no. I managed to contain myself and I just walked out of the theater. I didn't say a word. I just went back to my car and her, being the lovely girl she is, just stayed in the theater. I sat in my car for a few minutes just ruminating in the rage. Honestly, that was the moment that I knew this relationship had to end. I remember gripping the steering wheel with all my strength and twisting it. It was the only thing I could do to try to get some of the anger out. I didn't want to smash anything or hurt someone. Well, after enough time went by, someone noticed that I was in this car. It was an older man and his wife. They looked like they were in their late 40s or early 50s. He didn't have any hair and hers was somewhat gray. I thought it was a little weird how they just stood outside of my car and looked at me in complete and utter shock. All I could manage to do was look back at them and give them a nasty look. I wasn't thinking in the moment and these people were just being rude, and I responded the only way I knew how, with more anger. I reached my hand down to honk the horn at them in the hopes that they would just leave me alone. I was already having a bad night. I don't know why random old people had to annoy me now too. When my hand pressed down on the horn, I noticed something that startled me. It felt different than it normally does. I looked down to see that there was some kind of sticker on it. I started to look around and realized that I was in a different car. I immediately felt extremely embarrassed about the whole thing. These old people must have been trying to get back to the car when they saw me inside of it. I got out of their car and tried explaining the situation to them. I told them that my girlfriend and I had a fight and I went back to my car to cool down when I must have just stepped into theirs. Thankfully, they were really chill about it. They told me not to worry about it and to make sure that I get in my car next time. I told them that I would be more careful in the future and told them to have a good night. In all reality, I bet those people were scared out of their mind. I'm a pretty large male and I was in a really angry mood. If they had tried to open the door, I may very well have just reacted by attacking them. This is one of those wake-up call kind of incidents for me because I almost put myself in a position where I could unintentionally have hurt innocent people. I went back into the movie theater and sat somewhere away from my girlfriend. I didn't want to see her again, and I honestly wanted to watch the rest of that movie. When it ended, she texted me asking me where I was, and I just replied, Duck you and blocked her. And if you're wondering, yes, my phone auto-corrected a duck. I blocked her number and didn't plan on ever contacting her again. She never reached out in any other way, shape, or form either. We were still friends on Facebook for another two weeks and she didn't even bother to message me and ask what happened. She just didn't care. Hey friends, thanks for reading. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. 
If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. If you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all of these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And shout out to Alec and the gang. Party hard.